All right, what's going on guys? So if you didn't know, there's been a lot of drama or controversy regarding Temtem and the community versus the developers as certain decisions are concerned. On one hand, you have the community asking for the game to present more like an MMO and to have more engaging and long lasting content such as new island updates and new Temtem and stuff like that. And on the other hand, you have the developers that have basically been saying that the game's always been an MMO light this entire time and that it's essentially not financially feasible for them to create large scale updates as they don't think it'll bring back enough players. Now, there's a long post that the developers created on their website. We're not going to read all of it, but we will highlight some key points. And in it, they essentially apologized for certain aspects of their communication, outlined why they've taken certain stances, and even confirmed the existence of a new Temtem game that is in the works that isn't Temtem 2 or Temtem Swarm. That being said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive into this. Okay, so the article itself starts with them essentially acknowledging the fact that there has been a lot of unrest leading up to and now after the announcement of Temtem Swarm, and this is supposed to act as an open letter to the community. They start off with this section, which I feel like is almost a direct response to something I mentioned in my video. Could be because people saw my video and expressed similar opinions, or that they did in fact watch it. I'm not entirely sure, but let's see what it says. Is Temtem an MMO? Back in 2018, when our Kickstarter page for Temtem was created, we tried to clarify our point of view on the MMO dimension of Temtem, that it does not have the same scope, nor does it share the same bases as the MMOs most people think about when they think about the word MMO. In retrospect, we realized that the Kickstarter page was not the place where most players would get the information from. While we tried not to upsell the multiplayer features and capabilities of the game in store descriptions, and we've always shown the game as it is with its flaws and strengths, we should have included something similar to the Kickstarter FAQ question to clarify it further and amplify this information. We think that this would have been a better course of action and have learned from it for our future projects. From the get-go, we at Crema have described Temtem as an MMO light. This was our desired tag from the beginning and the one we would have used across all platforms had it been possible. Due to the lack of this tag, we settled for the closest one, which is MMO, as we believe that Temtem is massive, multiplayer, and online with all players from any part of the world on any platform coexisting in one sole global server with the unified economy that encompasses every player. That said, we've done our best in the past years to adapt Temtem to better fit the player's desires and the MMO tag. Many activities have been designed, created, and included out of the community's request for a more fulfilling MMO experience, such as Lairs, The Trading House, and Dojo Wars. This has made Temtem grow beyond our original intentions and even beyond our grasp. We understand now that seeing the game being called an MMO everywhere led to expectations that we failed to fulfill. It started with the use of the tag on our Steam page, which was then followed by publisher, the press, and the general public. While Temtem does fit the MMO build in our eyes, we understand it is not in everyone's, and we should have acted quicker to curb this trend. We apologize for the confusion this may have caused to some players. We've thought about changing the tags on platforms, but because the game's an online always experience, we didn't want to further cause confusion. We are working on making it clear in the stores to avoid this issue. We apologize for any confusion this decision might have caused to some players. While we can't change the past, we've learned from this mistake and we'll do better going forward. So I mentioned in my video that they keep saying that Temtem is an MMO light and always has been, but I mentioned that this is something that's only really expressed in the original Kickstarter campaign and wasn't something that was really advertised through their marketing campaigns and it's nice to see that they actually admitted not being clear about this because for many people it just felt like the game was touted as an MMO when trying to sell it but then clarified to be an MMO light when people started expecting more MMO-esque content. I realize that only clarifying this after the game sold as many copies as it did might feel like it's not taking full responsibility to some people but I am glad to see them acknowledge this because a big issue and criticism of the developers and sort of tend Temtem as a whole has been communication. Next up, they talk a little bit about islands and new Temtem, and we already discussed this in our last video where the Temtem CEO responded, but basically they go on to say that the amount of work and time that goes into these island updates and creating new Temtem essentially creates a situation where we get a spike in players, then it goes down to where it was before, and the content
content is consumed so quickly that it ends up not really being worth the time. The prospect of paid DLC also came up where they had this to say. Many of you have asked for DLC that contains new Thames, and while it crossed our minds for a moment, there are many obstacles to the idea, even more than benefits. Firstly, all of the issues of creating new Temtem, as mentioned before, apply, essentially that it's a lot of work, but there's even more to it. It would collide with our philosophy against pay to win. Think about it. What would happen to the players that don't purchase DLC? They wouldn't have access to the new Temtem with their new traits, and in many cases would not be able to face the DLC owning tamers. Due to Temtem being an online game, this would create a huge gap. This gap in separation would especially affect PvP, and it wouldn't be fair to essentially pit DLC owners against non-DLC owners. So I'm not going to sit here and tell the devs what they have to do. If they don't want to make new paid content or otherwise, we can't nor should we force them to. However, I still think that the idea of the DLC not existing because of potentially making the game pay to win as a cop out, they have Temtem Showdown, so competitive PvP would not be affected at all by the addition of DLC Temtem. All you'd have to do is make it so that any player can access those Temtem in Temtem Showdown, but players who don't pay for the DLC can't actually catch them or explore the new areas present. If that becomes an issue with casual PvP, they can always add Temtem Showdown to casual matches as well. Honestly, when Temtem Showdown first got announced, I thought that's what they were gonna use it for. It's literally the best possible way to circumvent these expansions becoming pay to win. Anyways, the next parts of the article talk about new multiplayer content, which they basically state that they're in a lot of like technical debt, which basically means that the more systems they add, the more bugs and stuff they have to deal with, not to mention the fact that the community's already dwindled so I don't even think at this point adding like mini games and all this other stuff is really going to invigorate the community anyway then they talk about kickstarter promises which they've basically fulfilled them all the arcade bars coming in 1.7 that was kind of the last thing then they show off a list of all the stuff they've added and prioritized based on fan feedback but the next part is what's really interesting especially because it has to do with the monetization system and is essentially them responding to this idea that if Temtem isn't a true MMO or live service game, why does it have live service monetization systems? And this is what they had to say. What about monetization systems on Temtem and our future projects? We understand that the monetization system to Temtem was deemed out of place for a lot of players with our game not following the traditional rules of a live service game. The Tamer Pass was designed with the intention to be as benign as possible with its self-supporting system and cosmetic only nature. One of our goals with the Tamer Pass was to increase player engagement and retention, which it succeeded to do as the Tamer challenges gave seasoned players new stuff to explore and obtaining all the cosmetic items became a nice goal to have on the side. The monetization system was put in place so we could provide all the cosmetic content and included the entire team working on purchasable items and the Tamer Pass were hired explicitly for this purpose and would not have existed without those features. With this, we want to reassure you that once again, no content was robbed from Temtem by having this system, but we do understand the displeasure goes beyond this and have come to understand your position on Temtem having microtransactions as it drifts further from a live service game. For this, we sincerely apologize. After hearing your feedback and looking at the future we want to provide for Temtem, we have reviewed our monetization on Temtem and a few changes will take place as soon as 1.7 launches in early June. As of 1.7, all microtransactions in the game will be gone. You will not be able to purchase Novas. The Novas you already own will be usable and you'll be able to purchase cosmetics from the daily and weekly shop as well as the Tamer Pass. Anything you could purchase with Novas will now be purchasable with Feathers. This includes Tamer Passes and anything from the weekly and daily shop. We will share more details as 1.7 gets closer. As of 1.8, we're making a handful of changes to alleviate FOMO. You'll be able to select any Tamer Pass from the past and complete its tracks. You'll also be able to unlock the premium track of any past Tamer Pass, this time using Feathers. You'll also be able to switch between passes at any given time and your progress in each one will remain preserved. We also want to adjust the store and take away as much FOMO as possible. Since many cosmetics have eventually become available for purchase with feathers and considering eventually all of them would, we believe feathers can be the substituting currency. We hope this will give everyone newfound goals as well as cosmetics being within your reach simply by playing the game. While it's still very early to talk about monetization for the future, we have learned from the situation and the lesson is clear and we'll keep these learnings in mind. They then have a list of improvements that are coming to 1.8, which include the following. 
important quality of life changes, balance changes meant to enrich and liven the meta while keeping it balanced, ability to switch between tamer passes, a new TMR rework, a renovation and rework of the game's economy with special focus and a close look at endgame activities, adjustments to Luma and Umbra chances, and at the bottom they also had this to say which is nice to see. Although in the past we always tried to keep a healthy and viable economy in the game, these changes stray away from that patch in search of a more rewarding and fun game. So in a nutshell, it seems like the final phase of Temtem will drop the season system, those will be done, and rework a bunch of stuff in order to make the game finally throw away some of those downsides that come with the MMO tag and focus more on making sure the game's actually fun. I'm hoping this means that feathers are more abundant and the restrictions like only being able to use the Tamer Paradise once a week without paying or the money costs associated with teleportation are removed as well. They did also talk about offline mode and essentially said the servers are so cheap that they don't need to worry about taking the game offline, but they will always make sure that Temtem is playable, which essentially means that if the servers do go down, they'll likely make a patch that allows for people to play it regardless. Now, I do know that this video is already starting to get kind of long, and I do apologize for this, but there's a lot of important information here, and despite me highlighting a lot of this stuff, I also want to make sure you get the full context. Now, that said, they also talked about the future of the franchise, which I think is really interesting. Will we see spin-off sequels and more Temtem stuff? We're aware of the community's desire for a sequel. Our communication channels are often filled with questions about a possible Temtem 2, expectations for it, and more. We hear you. The team has debated on the creation of a sequel for some time, but unfortunately the stakes are high and there aren't enough resources to achieve what the team would desire the sequel to be. After hearing so many opinions on a possible Temtem 2, we feel like we don't want to rush ourselves and make the same mistakes we've already made. If we were to do this, we'd need to be able to produce a product and a flow of content that you can all enjoy and love to the maximum. Such a product is still out of our grasp and reach. We're simply not ready. We are as a studio too small to embark on a feat we'd like Temtem 2 to be. We don't currently have the technical knowledge, time, nor ability to bring those ideas to life. As we look forward to the future of the Temtem IP, we have expanded our team to focus more on our development resources on an unannounced, untitled new game in the Temtem universe. This project is fully being developed in-house and we're keeping our aspirations fresh, big, and grand. We're also developing this project on a new engine, so foreign and uncharted territory, which is both exciting and scary. This is not Temtem Swarm and not Temtem 2. This is project down below. Our intentions for this game are to build new foundations and to try new things out that we'd love to see in a hypothetical Temtem 2 by exploring a new combat system, a stronger engine, and more things we can't unveil yet. We hope to learn the proper bases and have enough preparation and experience to put us closer to the materialization of something as precious to us and you as Temtem 2 would be. But that's not all. Our hope is to build a strong IP that people love in many ways. We're trying to broaden Temtem's horizon beyond video games and been working on such projects for a while now. As most of you may already know, an animated series is in the works. We can't share too much, but we are very excited about it and think it'll be fantastic for players and non-players alike. To conclude, we understand that many players feel like Temtem has a lot more potential to unlock and is not all it could be. But for us, that doesn't take away from the fact that we're actually really happy with the final product. We're so excited to see how Temtem has grown and feel like the final product is a complete experience and a very enjoyable one at that. When we set out on this journey, we couldn't dream of reaching this point of having created a game with so much content that provides hundreds and hundreds of hours of joy and fun, and we're proud of everything we've achieved and created. While it's not a perfect game, we've learned so, so much from it and will cherish this not so little game of ours. So that's basically it. They're happy with the game and it seems like Temtem Swarm is just something they're kind of putting minimal time into since it's being co-developed and they're really focused on this new down below game as well as just expanding the IP in general. The new game while not being Temtem 2 seems to be something that will feature its own battle system and by my best guess is probably going to be like a roguelike or something where you find yourself in the down below and have to navigate randomized areas since roguelikes tend to be a lot cheaper for them to make than full scale RPGs. But yeah, that was a lot to get through and I do have some mixed feelings here there on one hand i understand why they want to move on considering that all the eggs they put into the pvp basket unfortunately didn't end up hatching if you will and the player counts are already so low that it's honestly doubtful people will come back even if they do spend nine months making another island update but on the other hand i do wish things were done a little differently from the beginning and i still think that implementing an offline mode at this point in time would be the best way to show that you're listening to the community since so many people have been asking for it ultimately i do look forward to more temtem content in general whatever that 
that looks like in the future. But yeah, a pretty lengthy video. I will say I definitely like this response a lot more than the interview where it gave off the vibes that the community were to blame and the devs were kind of being victimized by them. And then we also had where they kind of shut down their Reddit due to toxicity and stuff like that. I was worried that they wouldn't make a sort of definitive statement about all this, but it seems like they did. And I do appreciate seeing something like that from them. Anyways, I will keep you guys up to date on any new information. We will also check out Temtem Swarm when it comes out and, you know, give it a chance. Does look like it can be some fun. But other than that, guys, if you do want to stay up to date on all things monster taming, subscribe to the channel for daily videos. You can also check out my Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and channel memberships linked below. And special thanks to my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Drogue Ghost, Candy Morency, Tragsoft, and Nemo. And I'll see you next time. Peace.